Previously on Coco Town. So if you use color set zero, your colors are green, yellow, blue, and red. If instead you choose color set one, buff, cyan, magenta, or orange. So there is no way to have one of these colors and one of those other colors on the screen at the same time. It's impossible. Green, yellow, red, blue. That's cyan, buff. There's a little bit of orange there. That's a tiny bit of magenta, but watch what happens when I run a little assembly code. Whoa! What was that? How did that happen? Wow, that's intense! So back in this video, I talked about a little demo that I wrote that squeezed more colors on the screen than normally you're allowed to have. And I promised that I would go over the code and exactly how I did it in a future video. This is that video. This video right here. This is the one where I do that. Uh, you don't have to watch that video first, but I do recommend that you are familiar with uh, interrupts, the field sync interrupt, the horizontal sync interrupt, and in general how CRTs work. And that video goes over all of that stuff. So if you're unfamiliar with it and you haven't seen that video, you might want to watch that one first. And today, as a bonus, we are going to talk about handling interrupts without an interrupt handler. Huh? Let's watch the app in action, and then we'll go over the code. It just runs a basic program, which does some drawing and draws some text onto the screen. And when the drawing is done, it loads an assembly language program and executes that. And there it goes. We have color set zero up here at the top, and we've got color set one down here at the bottom. Starting with the basic program, you'll see that basic just uses pmode 3.1 and color set zero for the screen. And it's just basic drawing code. So the stuff up here draws that car. We use a get to copy that car into an array. And we do a bunch of puts to copy that array onto the right side of the screen to make many copies of the car. And that's what these things here are. And then for the text, there's a subroutine that will draw text and it just expects that you've set up the text in a string variable and the color here. So you'll see the colors just go color one, two, three, four, and then they cycle back one, two, three, four for the other color set. That subroutine is mostly code I didn't even write. I just copied it from a type in magazine maybe or from a BBS download. I've had this like my whole life. So as soon as I found this, I started incorporating this into every basic game I ever made that wanted to draw text on a graphic screen. It just maps each character to a draw string so that it can then cycle through each character of a string you give it and then for each one, it will pass this to the draw command. So you'll see that the CC variable, the color variable, is used right here. So it's used as the main, as part of the main draw string after the C, which means color. Uh, so it'll, you know, it'll move to where it needs to go, blah, blah, blah. And then after this will come the string that it reads out of the data statement. And after it's done drawing all of those things, it loads the code we actually care about. So the colors assembly language code and executes that. So let's take a look at that. The first thing we do is we set the SAM control bits and we set the VDG operating mode. So it is basically as it already was set by basic, P mode three with color set zero. If you're curious to learn more about this stuff, you can learn all about it in some of my past videos on the VDG. Just know that this is basically redoing the P mode three color set zero, which probably isn't even strictly necessary. Next up, we disable all the interrupts by masking them using the condition code register. We initialize X, which is going to tell us which scan line we're on. We're gonna initialize it to 217 at first. We're certainly not necessarily at 217 when we do this, 
but you'll see in a minute why this is a useful thing to do. The next thing we're gonna do is to enable the field sync interrupt, but we're only going to use it to catch a single field sync. And the idea is this is gonna tell us the known time when we hit the bottom of the screen. So we have the usual code that I've gone over in that previous interrupt video to interact with the PIA, in this case, PIA zero side B, which is the field sync interrupt side. Enable field sync, enable reading from the data register to clear the clear flag, interrupt on falling edge, and finally we save those settings back and we clear that flag bit. Now we do something cool. We use the sync instruction. There is no interrupt handler anywhere in this code. The interrupt handler costs a lot of cycles. There's a lot of things that have to be done for the 6809 to set up and prepare to call the interrupt handler and then to find the interrupt handler address and jump to it and all that stuff. And then I've got to do an RTI at the end and all of that. There's actually no need. So the 6809, when it sees the sync, it doesn't just execute it and move on. It sits there and waits for the next interrupt to arrive. When it does, then it advances to the next instruction. So what this lets me do is it lets me know that this is happening at a very known time. This happens some known predictable number of cycles after field sync occurs. And as it turns out through trial and error, I discovered that it will be on scan line number 217 at that point. So when I get the field sync interrupt, I have to acknowledge it. And then I just go and disable it. So I basically redo a bunch of that code, but this time I'm zeroing out bit zero to disable that interrupt. And now I can start the real part of the code, which requires the horizontal sync interrupt. So now I'm talking to PIA zero side A, which is for the horizontal sync, doing the same bit of stuff, boop, 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 boop. And now I can start my main loop, the top of which is a sync. So now I'm gonna be going vroom, vroom, vroom over and over again if the very top of the loop is a sync. So this sync now is waiting for the end of the next horizontal line. When I receive that, I acknowledge the horizontal sync. I increment my scan line counter, which I'm keeping in the X register, and I'm comparing it with line 118. 118 is right around here. It's this line right here in that cutoff between color set zero and color set one. So if we're higher than that, then we move to this, this part of the code that deals with the second half of the field. Otherwise, we're in the first half of the field, and I just reassert that we're in color set zero. I don't really need to do this every time. It's mainly just essential that I do it for the very first line, because I used to be at color set one. So at the end of color set one, I need to make sure in the first line I go to color set zero. But in order to keep things simple, I just always flip to color set zero if I am in that first half of the field. This sets the color set, and then I go back up to the top. Otherwise, if I'm in the second half, I basically do the opposite. I go to color set one, set it there, and then I branch up to the top. But I do have one extra check, which is to see, am I wrapping around? In which case, I need to reset X to zero. 262 marks the end of the field. So basically, if I reached, if I got up to 262, I need to go back to zero. And that's it, folks. So the only interesting things are, use a single field sync to get myself synchronized with the scan line so I know where I'm at, and then use a bunch of horizontal syncs with each one incrementing my own counter of the scan line, and then changing the mode as appropriate. I got the idea to use sync rather than an interrupt handler, from Stuart Orchard's Dragon Timing Tests. These are the tests I talked about in the previous video, which helped me to tune the MAME Dragon Machine, where it uses field sync and horizontal sync to determine when to flip the color mode. So it can flip the color mode only around this checkerboard pattern. Very clever tests, and when I was looking through the source code and I saw the sync instruction, I thought, hmm, this is something I need to learn about. Let's take a look at this in the debugger. I'm gonna set a breakpoint right here, right at the top of the main loop, uh, right after the sync instruction completes. And let's check out X and beam Y. So X is the register that keeps track of the scan line we're at, and beam Y is MAME's idea of the scan line that we're at. If I continue until the breakpoint gets hit again, 
Beam y is 1, x is 1, again. Beam y is 2, x is 2, again. Beam y is 3, x is 3. So that's pretty cool. That's synchronized. The other thing to look at is beam x. So this is telling us where we are on the horizontal scan line when that sync instruction completes. 430 is quite near the right-hand side. And if I advance again and again and again, it is beautifully consistent. So it's always that many cycles before we get there. In fact, I'm going to hold it down and let us run. And you can keep your eye on the beam Y and the X register. You can watch them wrap around together. And if I stop, we're at 33 and 21. 21, that's hex. That's uh, 2 times 16 is 32, plus 1 is 33. So they're still in sync. And I can keep on going. And so you can see that although the screen looks rather static and nothing is happening, a whole bunch of stuff is happening. Now in contrast, let's take a look at what Dragonfire is doing. It is way more complicated. So I'm running this under the debugger. And one of the cool things about the debugger is even if you don't break, even if you don't stop the program, it's always giving you a rough idea of what, what's going on. It's giving you an idea that most of the time it's sitting on this instruction and it's letting you look at these registers. You could even open up a memory window and it'll kind of show you at various snapshots what that memory window looks like. So this is telling me that they're also using that sync trick because we happen to be here so often. So what would happen if I set a breakpoint after the sync instruction? So if we look and see where we are on the screen, we're at the 248 beam Y, and we're at frame 7386. If I continue until the next breakpoint, you see the frame goes up and the beam Y stays put. This is telling me that they're paying attention to the frames, I'm sorry, the field sync interrupt. I set a couple more breakpoints. This one is right after another sync and I set a watch point on FF22. So that means anytime the display mode changes, it'll stop. And anytime we hit this line, it will stop. You'll see beam Y is 22, so we're now near the top of the screen. And so if I continue, then I stop when the display mode changes. We've just stored A into the display mode. A is E5. And you'll see we're still sitting at uh, beam Y22, but our beam X is now up to 56. And we have throwaway instructions. These are not doing anything useful. You will never see anyone intentionally pushing all these registers and then pushing a few of them again, like for no reason. The idea is after these two pushes, we're going to store B as the display mode and B is ED. And all that did is it helped us advance beam X up to 296. Now we're going to do a little bit more what looks to me like garbage. And then we're back up here at the sink. Now beam Y is 23. And we're at the very beginning of 23. And so if I keep on advancing like this, you can keep take a look at beam Y. It'll, you know, stay the same scan line for a few times and it just blows its cycles, which helps the beam X to advance to what it needs to advance to. And all the while, A and B are holding the two display modes that it's switching between. So I'm going to go forward. I add one to X. X is being used as an interesting counter. As long as X hasn't reached 1A yet, we're going to go back up to C1DE, which is going to cause us to do more mode switching before we do the sync. So this is telling me that on certain lines, we want to do certain number of mode switches and on other lines, we do other amounts of mode switches. And once X hits 1A, then we're now in this region where we're changing modes, I guess, at a different rate until X hits 3F. And all the while, we are advancing from scan line to scan line every time through the branch. X needs to get up to 3F. And now we're into this region. And so now we're changing modes at this rate with slightly different instructions to count slightly different cycles. 
until x reaches 57. And now that x is 57, we're in a new loop until x is 5b. And it looks like we're changing the mode very quickly. We're sticking ed into the mode, and the very next instruction sticks e5 into the mode. And then a garbage, ed again, some more garbage, and then we keep advancing x until we hit 61. And this looks like some actual work might be getting done at this point. So I wonder if maybe at this point we're on some of these lines because these are all color set one. There's no need to make any color set changes on these. So it might be just getting a lot of work done while the scan lines are around here. And once we're out of that loop, only then do we do what appears to be acknowledging the horizontal sync interrupt. So then we go into our sync and we wait. And then once we're done, now we're at beam 162. And here we can do some more very fast paced mode changes. So perhaps 162 is now down to this area. We're in one and then zero and then one and then zero and then one. So from this, it seems that it is a combination of field sync interrupts and horizontal sync interrupts that Dragonfire is responding to. And this keeps going until X gets up to 62, which it is. And some more fast-paced mode changes. And then this keeps on going until X is 66. And some more fast-paced mode changes until X gets up to 68. And some more fast-paced uh, mode changes with a no ops in between to get the timing just right. And some more no ops, some more node changes. And at this point, it looks like we're done. So we're no longer looping. Our X has gotten up to 69. And our beam Y is now sitting at 172. So maybe we're, we're like in this area where from this until the end of the field, it's just all going to be mode uh, color set 1. And I'm going to let it fly until the next breakpoint or watch point. And that is our very first breakpoint that we set right after that sync instruction. So it looks like we're probably now in vertical blanking mode, going back to write and read from the PIAs to get the interrupts the way we want so we can get working on the next frame. But I'd be lying if I said all this made sense to me. I don't, I don't really know exactly what it's doing. But all the same, I hope you found this interesting. And if you check the description, you'll find a link where I uploaded all of the code for my colors demo. So you're welcome to download that, assemble it, play around with it, see if maybe you can improve it, make it do cooler stuff. As always, thank you for watching.